Welcome to Lighting the Way Today, a place where we discuss how to connect God's Word with topics relevant to everyday life. We hope this conversation encourages, enlightens, and inspires you. Enjoy this episode. Hello, everybody. I'm Sierra Bergman, and today's episode of Lighting the Way Today will leave you tapping your toes and singing a new song. We get to hear a conversation between Bob Stanley and Lauren Bonner about Bob's life and how godly music plays a part in it. He's even going to perform a few of his songs, one of which is new. If you've heard Bob's music before, these songs may be some of your favorites. If you haven't heard him before, then you are in for a treat as you listen to this man who has learned so much about God and how God works in his life, play his guitar, and sing songs he's written. Enjoy. So today, I get to have a conversation with Bob Stanley. And Bob is someone that I have known since I was like eight years old or so, maybe 10, somewhere in there. Um, And he has always fascinated me because he's one of those people, and you don't meet very many of these, where just from having like a few conversations with them, you can tell that they have a relationship with God. You know, he references God as his father, like he references Barb as his wife. So um, it's always got my attention because who doesn't want to have a relationship with God like that? And um, not only is that really awesome about him, but he is an amazing musician. And he has been making music uh, that brings the light of the word to people's ears for decades now. And um, his music leaves you better than when you found it. Um, You're inspired, you're excited, and you got the word in your head and the truths that you can find in the Bible. So um, each song is like a mini teaching that's loaded with the truth and uh, reflects a deep understanding that Bob has of the Bible. So I am so excited for this conversation today. Thank you for joining me, Bob. Oh, my pleasure. Yes. So um, I want to get right into it. Sure. You have a new song called Abiding in the Truth of the Word of God's Word, correct? Abiding in the Truth of God's Word. Nice. Well, without further ado, would you play that? Because I know we'd love to hear it. Sure thing. <laughs> Lived in Chicago, but I made a change. My friends looked at me and said I was being strange. I told them, I'm changing my address. I just got to move. You want to find me, I'll be abiding in truth. Abiding in the truth of God's word. That's where you'll find me. Abiding in the truth of God's word. Leaving my old address behind me. In the truth of God's word. That's where I'll be Jesus Christ is my living Lord He paid the price for my old ways If I'm gonna live It'll be for Him I said goodbye to my yesterdays Yes I did Biding in the truth of God's word that's where you find me, finding in the truth of God's word, leaving my old address behind me, in the truth of God's word, that's where I'll be, that's where I'll be. I've been given eternity, sure beats the heck out of 50 years, I have a future, that's never gonna end Wanna come with me Wanna come with me Listen 
God's love can open your heart. And you love the change that's gonna come. We've always said we wanna be free. But God's word's the only way it'll come. It's the only way. Binding in the truth of God's word. That's where you'll find me. Binding in the truth of God's word. Leaving my old address behind me. In the truth of God's word. That's where I'll be. That's where I'll be. Ooh. Abiding in the truth of God's word. That's where you find me. Abiding in the truth of God's word. Leaving my old life behind me. Abiding in the truth of God's word. That's where I'll be. That's where I'll be. That's where I'll be. Wow. Some fresh hot Bob Stanley right there. Oh, that was really great. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, so a Chicago guy. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about your childhood and you know when did you realize that life is you know spiritual more than just what's right in front of us? Well, it didn't happen until I was 27 years old. <gasps> My life before that it was it was kind of a chaotic. And I, I got tired of that, and I said, I need to change. I said, I don't want to live this way. Uh, I was not, uh, in life, I was not a success at all. Musically, I was fine, but in my life, I was not a success, and I needed something that would uh, give me some stability and everything. And I ended up finding it when I got witnessed to by somebody, and I went to my first home fellowship and it was actually it's uh let's see 70 no 70 what is it 47 years this month so oh cool got born again in my first fellowship that changed my whole life wow happy second birthday <laughs> thank mm -hmm. you wow so home fellowship so that's like um when people it's like a bible study in somebody's home yes it is yes that's it's like it's a church in the home is what it is yeah yeah, that's such a great intimate way to learn the word. It's um, good for me. Yeah, yeah, to learn about the Bible. So, okay, <laughs> will you tell me more about your relationship with God? Like, what did you do to cultivate it when you were first learning about the Bible? Well, one of the things when I first got in the Word, and I'm here when I first went to my first fellowship and everything, I heard the word taught, and... I realized this is the one thing I've been wanting my whole life. I wanted something like that. Um, I never had what I call love in my life. I, my parents were loving and everything, but I really never had any any kind of relationship with love. It was not, I wasn't that kind of person. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I heard the word of God and God's love for me, I said, that's, I want this. This is what I want the rest of my life. I want this kind of love. And uh, that happened in my first fellowship. I walked out in my first fellowship uh, thinking that. And it was at my first fellowship. I got born again at that very fellowship. Mm -hmm. So that's when my life started. And uh, the more I learned my fellowship coordinator, he would always, he would give us an assignment. You know, he would say, uh, try this out. Yeah. Try this out. Every time he said that to me, I would try it out. And every time I did, it worked. And uh, he did that many times. It must have been a dozen times. And I saw it worked every single time. So it, my trust was built very quickly because I knew that God was real. And I knew that God doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. uh, he proved it to me. Yeah. So uh, it went from there. And I started learning more and more word. And the more word I learned, the more I saw how perfect God is, the more I learned that what I could do to to uh, so, give something back to Him, you know, uh, you know, I, nothing I can hand to Him, but I could, you know, do something to people mm -hmm. to bless their lives. That's you know, that's how I started playing music, doing the music for God. I decided I wanted to do something to bless their lives, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, I just learned. As I went along, I learned that these things worked, and I was just 
I don't know why I tried him out. You know, I didn't always do what people wanted me to do, but he'd said that I believed him. Mm -hmm. And uh, it works for me. And uh, it works for anybody who wants to believe. Right. What were some of the things you remember that he's like, try it? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'll give you the big one that um, one night after fellowship, a friend of mine and I, we went witnessing. Uh, we went to a bar. And because a lot of times back in the, that time, we <laughs> that's where you would go to witness the people because that's where, you know, the people were, you know, hungry and especially thirsty people. <laughs> yeah. So we went and uh, we were just having a nice time witnessing the people and talking to them. And then I started hearing there's a table just a few feet away, mm -hmm. table with guys, and they um, they were saying things about it. They started talking about us, everything, and I recognized one of them, and one of them was uh, was an ex-boyfriend of the girl that got me in the word. Huh. So he was a little upset about that, and uh, so finally told my friend, I said, let's, let's just go. Let's go out. So we walked outside, and I, I knew they're going to follow. And so they did. They followed around and came around, but and they yell at us and they said, "Hey, you know, you, you know, call us a name, call me a name, particularly." So I did what my fellowship coordinator told us that very night. He told us, he said, "Don't let people call you names." He said the people call you names, just say, "That's not my name." You can either call me by, call me by my name or call me a son of God. <laughs> and uh, so they come walking up to me and I'm surrounded us and they're just getting ready to throw a punch and I said I said that's not my name so you can either call me Bob Stanley or you can call me a son of God and when I said son of God they all backed up and they said son of God and I said yes sir and my friend said is there any trouble gentlemen and they said no no trouble at all and they turned around and walked away wow <laughs> and I was quite impressed mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the power of God and uh, so it's been like that since the start. Mm -hmm. And I have no reason to doubt. I have trust in God in every area. I know that he will never let me down. I know he will always bring me victory. Mm -hmm. he, that's what he does. That's who he is. Yeah. And he's my dad. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. And I love how we can... You know, the more that we learn about the word, you know, the more you read it or you just seek out where you can learn it from, the more you can get to know God and the more you can get to know what you can expect from him. And so that you can trust him so that you can figure out what he tells us to do and then try it, yeah. you know, just see if it works. Yeah. Um, but I love that. And it's cool to see how God works in other people, too. You know, I've definitely had that where, you know, sometimes... Someone that I've been studying the Bible with, you know, has encouraged me to do something. And it was totally God working in them because when I followed through on that action, I saw such awesome results. You know, it was like that is that is some phenomenal, very powerful results. But yeah. the word, that's the word. You know, the word never comes back void. And it's true. First John says that we're sons of God. So, yeah, boom. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's really cool. And it's really neat to know that. God will work in people. Right. He will work in them. He wants to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we don't need to be surprised when they do. Right. He does work in them. Yeah. And it doesn't, you know, there's no qualifications for that. You know, it's, <laughs> ha yeah. have you believed Romans 10, 9, and 10 and gotten born again? Because yeah. then he can work in you. You yeah. know, if you're believing to do his will or do what he needs done right in your path, then you can totally expect for God to be working in you. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so we're talking a lot about how, because God loves us, we can help people. And I loved how you explained that, how that's how you got into music in general. It's just so you could bless people. I, for one, am very blessed with it. <laughs> um, that does remind me of one of my favorite songs of yours, God Wants the Best for You. Could you perhaps play that one for us? I sure can. Here we go. God wants the best for you, the best for you. So claim all he has to give. God wants the best for you, the best. 
the best for you. So live. Children, we can always win. Our victory is in Christ our Lord and Savior. By faithfulness we see that we are truly free and we are His forever. Before this world began, God called us out to stand. He filled us with His power. And life's more abundance lies in the giving of our lives. Make this your finest hour. God wants the best for you, the best for you. So claim. All he has to give God wants the best for you The best for you So live Children, we know the mystery And we got this ministry Though we did not deserve them And we can win or lose it's up to us to choose Are we going to serve Him? God wants the best for you The best for you So claim all He has to give God wants the best for you The best for you That is a powerful song, and it's full of powerful truth. God is good, you know, and he only wants good for us. Yes, ma'am. I love that. And so on a personal level, he only wants good in our lives. And I love how in the song you talk about how that means not having fear yeah. in our lives. You know, fear is the exact opposite of good. It brings no good to our lives. So God doesn't want us to have any of it, and it's available for us to not have any fear. Um, can you tell me about a time in your life that you you saw that? You saw it's God's absolute will for us to not have any fear. Well, the first thing is that when I first, the, actually the first verse that really caught my mind and caught my eye and caught my heart was 2 Timothy 1.7. Uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of loveliness of a sound mind. So I've held on to that throughout my whole life. Um, and it was uh, in my life when I'd be tempted to fear something when situations weren't going well, I would think of that verse and I'd think, well, that's, that's not from God. So I, I'm not even going to consider that. So uh, that's when I decided, you know, I started from that point deciding that I want to live a life without fear, totally without fear. It's so much more enjoyable, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and it's it's been, it's proven itself over and over in my life. So, I'm glad I did that. And it's still a verse that I love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you saw how it was available for you to not have any fear, which then is like this absolutely transformative concept for some people. So. Have you been able to, like, teach other people or show them that to how they could have no fear in their lives, you know? Well, the main way I could do that is 
just tell them what God did for me and that if God did it for me, it'd certainly do it for somebody else, for anybody, because uh, I'm not any special person. I'm just like anybody else. But I just tell them what God did for me in situations, uh, bad situations, uh, life life threatening situations, and I just decided to believe God. I, I didn't actually, you know, I went through a life threatening situation, and um, I had open heart surgery. But first, I went down to the hospital, and uh, I had a lot of believers that came also to to uh, encourage me, and you were one of them. Oh, yeah. And uh, a number of others. And when I went into surgery, everything seemed to fall into place. <clears throat> Excuse me. My surgeon ended up to be the top surgeon in the whole country for heart surgery. <laughs> and uh, you know, when they were getting ready to move me in for my surgery, the guy wheeling me said, you got the best guy. I said, are you some big wig or something? I said, yeah, I'm a son of God. <laughs> and then, Amen. Yeah. So and then he started taking me down, and I just had no fear at all. I had no fear that uh, I expected fully to just recover. But I also said, I'm either going to hear when I wake up, somebody's going to say, Bob, time to get up, or I'm going to hear the trump of God and the shout. So either way, you know, I'm going to get up because – Resurrection's definitely a reality, so a resurrection that we're going to enjoy when Jesus Christ returns. So have no fear about anything else was something like that. It was a tough thing to go through, but God brought me through it, and uh, he always does. That's right. I love that, how we can remember what God brought us through before because he can certainly do it again. And we know it, it says in the word that God's no respecter of persons. So if he will do it for one person, he will do it for somebody else. If they're sure. believing for it. So um, that that is really cool. And such a great thing to be able to help people with, to not have any fear in their lives or to see God work. So one of your recent songs that I've been able to hear pretty recently, but it's like one of my favorites. Hmm. Um, is when you love someone. Sure. Uh, when can you tell me about your writing process when you wrote that song? Oh, when I okay, that song was. Uh, well, I'd been witnessing. Actually, I'd been part of uh, our ministry's outreach program, and I had been witnessing and witnessing faithfully and for months, and I was just. I wasn't seeing the results I thought I should see. So I decided to pray to God. I did, and I actually complained. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he just let me know. He says, Bob, it's not really about you. It's not about you. All you have to do is speak my word and love people. And he says, I'll do the rest. I'll take care of the rest. And so that's what this song's about. And uh, it's one that, a lot of people have told me they really liked it and it's really touched their heart. So I'm glad I wrote this one. Oh, I think it's still one of my favorites. Absolutely. I think anybody can relate with it. Um, and I know our listening audience would love to hear it. Could you play it for us? I sure can. It's called When You Love Someone. Standing before you Made a line of stops today I've been searching all around For that special heart Long to know the way mm. So many laugh or say Come back another day Sometimes it seems I'm just throwing your love away So I pray
And you remind me what your word did for me When so many thought I was out of reach Who'd have ever thought that I would believe Looking at me Somebody saw past the lie on my face And the walls that surrounded my lonely heart And showed me a love that I'd never known before That day So why should I give up when no one seems to care I'm the one who has what they need to hear and right now someone's crying to know your love I need to be there With all you put inside me You don't just love when it's easy You keep giving your all When you love someone It's not for the things you get or not You keep reaching out When you love someone Father, when I think of all you've done for me, all the junk you put me out of, God, I'm so thankful. And when I think of the love someone had for me, looking beyond the hardness of my heart, I want to do that for someone else. So I will not give up when no one seems to care. I'm the one who has what they need to hear. And right now someone's crying to know your love I want to be there With all you put inside me You don't just love when it's easy You keep giving your all When you love someone It's not for the thanks you get or not You keep reaching out When you love someone Whatever it takes Father, that's what I'll do when you love someone. Someone did it for me, so I'll do it too when you love someone. You don't just love when it's easy, you keep giving your all when you love someone. When you love someone. You keep reaching out when you love someone. I'll find that special heart today. Woo! That is such a powerful song. And I love that line. Um, how he pulled you out of all the junk that you were in you know it's like whatever junk you are in that could be just any sort of junk it does not matter to god he can pull you out that's right. and that's that's what a what an encouraging thing that he doesn't expect us to be perfect you know and he always wants better for us so when you're ready to get out of the junk he's ready to get you out that's and right. you know we can be those people too on the other end of that that can help pull people out of the junk yeah. and you know, tell him what we know about God and what he's willing to do for them. And I love that. He's a, he will always refresh us, you know, as we as we give and as we take care of people like he wants us to. Yep. Like it says in the Bible to do. And it's the most fulfilling, you know, when we're when we're taking care of people and when we're helping bring out the best in other people and they can help bring out the best in us. And you see that. And that's just what you see described in the Bible. It's um, it is possible to have that yep. <laughs> it's wonderful well bob uh we have plenty of listeners with musical talent and they love god and they make their own music so do you as a musician have any advice for buddy musicians out there uh the first thing is to make sure they have their head in god's word because that's where that's the inspiration if you want to uh if you want to help somebody if you want to inspire somebody, if you want to reach somebody and lift them up to a, a God's way of life, that's the way to do it. You have to give them the word. You have to know the word 
and as you uh, you know write write things, um, just keep that in mind that God is your your sufficiency. God is the one that's helping you. He will not hide anything good from you when you're writing a song because he wants people to reach be reached even more than you do. So, but that's the first key and and I'll practice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That but that comes after. Yeah, absolutely. God first, and then the unavoidable. <laughs> practice. <laughs> um well, thank you so much. I this has been so great to be able to have this time to just sit and talk. And do you have anything else that you want to share with our listening audience? Well, I'll tell you what. If you want to see your life really take off, you want to see your life have meaning, live for God, make known his word, serve the word to people, because that's where the meaning of life really is. Mm -hmm. And that is where the adventure is, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bob. Thank and you. And we'll... Uh... See you next time. We'll see you around. What a cool conversation. We got to hang out with Bob Stanley as he jammed to some powerful songs about God's goodness and his love. I love the line where he said, musically, I was fine, but I was not a success in life. The moment he knew that he wasn't happy with who he was, God brought someone to his life to help him change it all. What was your favorite line? Perhaps you can let a friend know and share this episode with them. Or perhaps you can share this episode with someone you know who wants to make Christian music. Well, that's what we have for you today. Let's see what's in store on our next episode of Lighting the Way Today. God's words shine in our life. He lights the path. What a show. That was God's word in conversation. Nothing but the truth. A podcast backed up by biblical proof. And the show keeps rolling. Can't miss the next edition. What's happening next? Turn it up and take a listen. In Psalm 102, it says, the world passes away, but you are the same, referring to God, and your years have no end. <laughs> you know, God, God is always the same. He is just that constant source, a very present help in time of trouble, it says in Psalm 46. And it doesn't matter what's going on. The world will pass away. All the things of the world, things will change. But God's always going to be there. And if we just will give him an honest shot, if we will give him that opportunity to trust him and let him do his work and to work within us to will and do of his good pleasure, you know, we'll see the positive results. Thanks for listening to Lighting the Way today. Join us next time as we discuss biblical topics, letting the word of God light our way in life.